Welcome to Nichols Retirement Empire. Yes, after I left the fish in the garage, the fish carcasses, I got in a lot of trouble. I got in so much trouble. Tammy's watching this squirrel that's up in that tree. You hear it? It's mad. He wants us to leave. But anyway, I got into so much trouble that I got a new truck. Oh my God. <laughs> now we had to, I told you my dad wrecked his truck in that last video. And so I'm going to give him my last new truck, which I bought in 2007. Um, some people like to get a new car, you know, every two or three years. Um, my recommendation to you, for what it's worth, when it comes to new cars and new trucks is this. Uh, if you get one every few years... Um, you don't really appreciate, you know, the new, or if you, you know, get used ones every two or three years. If you wait about, I say you should wait at least 12 to 15 years. And that way, when you get a new one, you are so blown away. By <laughs> I have a video, if you want to go back and watch it, from uh, a long time ago about why I don't buy Chevys anymore. I have a good reason for why I don't buy Chevys. I used to always buy Chevys. And if you are a younger person, uh, you don't really get that. You have to be a little older to get the Ford versus Chevy thing because you used to, kids, kids, children out there, when Grandpa was a, was a little boy, <laughs> When I was a kid, um, you didn't have foreign cars. Uh, they were just coming around. Uh, you know, in the prior to the '70s, there were very few foreign cars that were, and they weren't competitive at all with American cars. They weren't competitive with American cars until uh, in the '70s when you started having the fuel shortages and the price of gas started going up to horrible amounts like a dollar um, and we were all panicking because gas was a dollar but anyway uh, when the fuel shortages started um, then the foreign cars came into play but prior to that there was a time in the United States for those of you who don't know or for those of you that would like to remember there was a time in the United States where basically you know there were three major car make manufacturers and really there were two when it came down to it, bottom line, um, for the vast majority of people, you were a Ford or a Chevy person. And that was, you know, and people were pretty serious, you know, it's, they were pretty serious about, you know, you are, that's what you bought. You know, at this point, I am, I have bought now three Fords in a row, um, partially because my daughters keep wrecking their cars. And what's so funny is, this is what I'm saying that young people wouldn't understand. There'll be older people that will get mad about this video because I switched from Chevy to Ford. They'll get mad because I like Ford. Uh, and young people are just like, what? what difference does it make? A car is a car, you know, whether it's a Toyota, Ford, Chevy, Honda, you know, whatever. They just don't get They don't get it. I mean, it's like saying, you know, Alabama and Auburn are both football teams. I, I dislike both of them. No. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. You got to be Alabama or you got to be Auburn. Period. You can't be, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Well, they're both football teams. I can just, you know, switch over from the no. mm -mm. You got to pick one. You live in Georgia, you got to pick one. You live in Alabama, you got to pick one. And that's where it used to be. You had to pick one. You had to pick Ford or Chevy. Whichever one you picked, you stuck with it. No matter how crappy the cars were that they made. <laughs> uh, not everybody was like that. But you, you guys know. Y'all know people. You know. You know. You know. You know. That reminds me of a joke. I think I'll tell you. This old lady. She loved to shop. She goes into this dress shop and uh, the owner, and it was like a little small town, small dress shop, 
uh, the owner had a parakeet that he kept at the front of the store in its little parakeet cage. And uh, the lady had never been to the shop before, so she goes walking in. And the parakeet, when the lady came in, the parakeet goes, you're fat. You're fat. <laughs> the lady gets all mad because the parakeet said, you're fat. <clears throat> so she just kind of stewed about it. And it was a small town. There wasn't any other stores to go to. So she, she went home. She thought about it. Got madder and madder. She went back the next day. Same thing. Well, maybe the, maybe the parrot will say something different. Same thing. She walks in, opens the door. You're fat. You're fat. She was just beside herself. So she calls the owner up to the front of the store. And she just starts jumping all over him. Your parrot is calling me fat. He's done it two days in a row. He said it four times. It's ridiculous that you have... And the owner tried to talk to her. Say, lady, I'm... Listen, it's a parrot. It's a bird. He don't even know what fat is. He just knows words. And he says them, you know. The birds just repeat the same things. They repeat what they hear. You know, and, 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 and it, you shouldn't take it personal. It's just a... And she just got so mad. She was like, you know what? I'm going to tell everybody in this town how terrible your story is and how terrible this parrot is. And you're going to lose all your business. And so the, the owner was like, oh, whoa, whoa, hang on. Now, I don't want my business destroyed over this bird. So he decided, well, I'm going to punish it. So he opens up the cage and he grabs hold of that bird and he just beats the crap out of that bird. <laughs> There's feathers flying everywhere. The bird's squawking. The owner's yelling at him. Don't you ever call anybody fat again. I can't believe you did that. So he just punishes the bird. So the lady, once he gets finished, he looks at her and says, Ma'am, are you satisfied? I have beat this bird half to death. And she said, Yes, I am. Thank you for making that bird accountable for calling me fat. So she leaves the store. She didn't come back to the store for a long time. But there comes a time there comes a time when she needs a new dress. So, oh, sorry. It's kind of getting shorter there for a second. Anyway, there comes a time when she needs a new dress. So she goes back down to the store. It's months later, months later. And, you know, sure enough, when she drives by, she sees in the store window, the parrot is in the cage, still there, recovered from the beating that the store owner had given him. So she walks in, and she's so smug. She's like, I guarantee you, that parrot won't dare say you're fat. I, there's no way. After the beating, that story, that, that parrot just deserved that. I guarantee. So she comes walking in with this look on her face. And she looks over at the parrot, just daring. Oh, I hope the parrot says so. I hope the parrot. She looks over and looks at the parrot. And the parrot looked at her. And the parrot goes, You know. <laughs> You know, that's a good joke. You know what the best jokes are? The best jokes are jokes where you laugh because it's funny to you whether anybody else laughs or not. <laughs> that's a funny one to me. Uh, Y'all have a good day on Nichols Retirement Empire. Bye. You know, you know.